Hey all, welcome to Circle of Tone. And today we have one in a two-part series of $1 strings versus expensive strings. So let's get straight to it. Uh, this is the clean section. So I did some pretty simple clean stuff. One microphone and not even expensive one, very cheap microphone. Keep in mind that these are Les Paul cleans. So it's just in the middle position. All right, let's get to it. Guitar number one. So that was crazy. The, I, I did not expect that much of uh, an improvement on tone from the $1 strings. The $1 strings sounded better. Now, I think this is why they're a dollar. Out of three packs that I bought of the $1 strings, three E strings snapped at the ball end when I was just tuning it up. And it's gone. That's the last of my $1 strings. So there's the rub. The, uh, the, the expensive strings, they were, they felt more solid. I didn't like, they, they kind of felt a, a bit, a bit uh, stiffer than the cheap ones. Uh, they sounded deader. They, it's, it's almost like uh, as if they were slightly coated or something, like muted compared to the vibrance of the $1 strings. Uh, I think you can tell. I mean, if you put some headphones on and listen to them, the expensive strings sounded almost as if there was a limiter on them. There seemed to be more movement and excitement and shimmer and whatever on the cheap strings. It's crazy, but goddamn they break. And also the more expensive ones were definitely better tuning stability-wise for the first uh, like half hour. After you have stretched the crap out of the cheap ones and uh, they settle, they're they're good. They're, they're okay. They're not as good as the $15 ones after they've settled, but they're completely usable. So I am actually going to... Uh, there, there's a little thing that I did because I run out of top E strings to keep the budget at a dollar. I have these rogue strings, which I buy in bulk. So because they're dollar strings was such a failure and the top E three times broke. I'm just going to put on a similar cost top E string that usually they're pretty good, the rogues. For the money, you can get a bunch of them for next to nothing. So this will keep the price at a dollar. 
So it would work out as the same price as the dollar string per string, if you know what I mean. So I have turned to rogue strings in the past. Say if I have a new set on and I break a toppy, because I do hammer at these things, then the rogue strings, I just, I don't switch them out for another expensive string because, you know, these one string isn't going to make the world a difference. But I honestly like the tone of the cheap strings better. It was something about it. It almost turned this more strat-like if it's more talkative. It's crazy. So now it's a case of I can't figure out the how long they're going to last, but I don't think it matters. When you're playing gigs, or what, I'm not sure if I would uh, actually trust them to play gigs, but what I would do is probably look at other more uh, expensive strings than the Diodarios and... Uh, yeah, it, I wasn't that impressed with them tonally for the cleans. So, pros and cons. Pros, the expensive ones are solid, better tuning, better reliability. Where does that matter? Live. That matters live. Uh, in the studio, it's more frustrating. It's less frustrating in the studio. But then the trade-off is the tone. So I would always go for tone over over messing around with things. It reminds me of Jack White, where he recently went to more modern guitars because he was so done with the old guitars moving and shifting. He played plastic guitars and they would warp and all sorts of stuff and he'd be fighting the guitar. So I did fight the guitar with the cheap strings. But the tonal benefits, for cleans at least, was amazing. And playability, it just felt a little bit more slinky, a little bit more fluid. I could be more expressive with the cheap strings absolutely blew my mind. I think they may be good strings that were cheap because they have maybe some sort of manufacturing issue, especially on the top E strings. That one went like clockwork. Huh. I even checked for burrs or anything on my guitar. This is a test guitar that I put together for, uh, for tone wood. So it's also, I go beyond tone wood where, because, because tone wood guitars have to be bolt on next. So I'm like, but well, what about the difference between a, a bolt on and a set neck because you got mass so I put the same mass on the heel here you can see it looks like an SG uh, as as if it was a bolt-on so this guitar sounds really bloody good by the way listen to this these are the expensive strings see and it is actually uh, in tune so you know you can't can't fault these uh, the new strings for that so next week is going to be a distortion and I'm going to really push it because I'm going through a 5150 copy Bagheera and a Tube Screamer. So standard tuning through a 5150 it tends to be a bit ice picky so I wanted to hear I was a bit worried about the you know the strati aspect I was talking about I was a bit worried if that would translate to sounding like scritchy scratchy ass through the distortion so I thought I'm going to give it the vintage 30s I'm going to give it the 5150 Bugera copy and you really see what happens and uh, these are actually my new prototypes uh, pickups so uh, I really like the sound of those for cleans so they'll be coming out soon as well. Let me know which one you liked the best when it comes to the clean tones in the comments and uh, we have a Facebook group it's over a thousand strong we discuss uh, recording techniques, uh, new live music, bands, that type of thing, share your own music Come and join us. Just, just search Circle of Tone in Facebook. Come say hi. And uh, that's it. Please don't subscribe because nobody's subscribing. And see you next time.